Oh, hello, hello. Uh, for everyone joining us today, where we're starting to see folks here, uh, we're going to get started in just a few minutes. Today, we have Tori Dunlap, who we, we've had on Discover before for one of our workshops. Uh, we're very, very glad to have her back. Um, the workshop Tori is giving today is how to successfully negotiate your salary in four easy steps. Uh, like I said, we're going to get started in just a few moments. Uh, but before I hand this over to Tori, what we'd love to make sure of is you can hear us. Uh, so if you're just joining us today, please write in the chat, you know, where are you joining us from? Can you hear us okay? Um, can you see us okay? That'd probably be important too, because there is a presentation component to this. Uh, and in just a few minutes, I'll kick it to Tori. And Tori, why don't you say hello just so people can hear you as well uh, in this hello, test phase. Everybody. Thanks cool. so much for tuning in. And hi, Aaron. It's good to see you again. <laughs> exactly. Um, You're cool. like the only person I've seen in weeks, you know, at this yeah. point in quarantine. Yeah. So it, it does feel that way. It's, uh -huh. it, even if yeah. it's virtual, we at least have been able to see each other here. <laughs> um, and folks, I see we have folks today joining us via the Teachable chat and the YouTube chat. Uh, so, you know, while Tori gives her presentation, there will be time at the end for, for Q&A. Also, I'm going to do my best to try to watch both chats to grab all the questions we gather over the course. But, you know, no promises. I'm going to do my best. You're double dipping today. Today I am. Um, like I said, we're going to start in just a few minutes. For anyone who joins us live, I did want to call out, there will be a replay available. So if at any point you're watching today and you're like, wow, what Tori just said, like that blows my doors off. I'm so excited to learn that. I need to go write this down. You can hit pause. It's okay. You can hit play after. You could go back. You could rewatch a section. It's all, all good. Um, and this replay will be available again after the fact. So don't worry. It's all good. This is like the type of workshop where I encourage you to learn from what Tori is saying because I learned from what Tori is saying. <laughs> and that's one of the best components of these workshops. Um, Cool. So I think we're at time. I think we've got enough folks who joined us. Tori, your workshops, again, how to successfully negotiate your salary in four easy steps. The things you're covering today is approaching salary conversations with confidence. The number one thing you're doing wrong in a negotiation, how to fix it, and how to answer the dreaded job interview questions about salary. You know, this is a really exciting chat. For those who don't know you today, I would love if you kick it off with, let's hear a bit about your background and let's get into this workshop. Sure. Thanks so much for having me again. And I will say as a teaser, if you are here live, stay till the end because we have some exciting stuff coming at the end too. All right. Can you see my screen? See me? Perfect. Just added it. They should be able to see both. And if anybody can't see what Tori is saying, please let us know in the chat. Yeah, let we'll me know. Out. Technical difficulties. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, my name is Tori Dunlap. I run Her First 100K, which is a money and career platform for women. But I like to say 95% of my advice has, is completely universal to anybody who might be watching. So um, I actually started uh, my business on the side of my nine to five in marketing four years ago uh, in a kind of post-Trump election world, realizing that women specifically are at a severe disadvantage when it comes to financial advice and guidance, and that really all of us are severely undereducated when it comes to things like how to save money, how to pay off debt, how to invest, and yes, how to negotiate your salary. So I was one of those people that all of my friends were coming to for advice and guidance. And I realized that I had a financial education growing up. I had parents who were really dedicated to teaching me how to how to money, for lack of a better phrase, and realizing that that wasn't the case. And I wanted to use that privilege, you know, to educate other people. And with that privilege came a responsibility. And so I founded Her First 100K because of it. So my work's been featured in a bunch of different places, um, including BBC last week, which was really fun. This time last week, I was asleep because I had gotten up at four in the morning to do a BBC interview. So that was really fun. Um, but I have yeah, been featured on Forbes, Good Morning America, The New York Times. And we have a community now of almost a million people, um, a million financial feminists. And really, that's my platform is fighting the patriarchy through financial education and giving people, especially women, resources to feel more financially confident. Um, and part of what I'm going to teach you today has been actually highlighted in CNBC as well. I've been highlighted as a negotiation negotiation expert um, by the folks over at CNBC. So I'm really excited to launch into this today. So when I was working corporate before I took her first 100K full time last year, I was able to successfully negotiate over 15% more for every job I've held using some of the strategies I'm going to teach you today. Um, and 
I will tell you negotiating was super scary. And I think we all have gone through that. I am a negotiation coach. I now coach thousands of people across the country about how to negotiate. It's still scary at some times. So understand that if you're feeling a little intimidated negotiating, if you're feeling a little scared, we've all been there. And it's so important to be mindful of that and to also commit yourself to negotiating anyway, to doing the hard, scary thing, because it means so much more money over your lifetime. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I held uh, three different jobs during my corporate career, and I was able to negotiate more money in every single one using the strategies I'm going to teach you today. Uh, last year alone, me as a negotiation coach, I actually helped women get over fifty or $250,000 more in salary and benefits. Thank you, Erin. Um, so I've seen just the incredible confidence that negotiation brings, um, whether it's, you know, a couple thousand dollars extra in salary or a more flexible work schedule or, you know, a better title. I've seen so many women negotiate for what they're worth and have that affect the rest of their lives as well. So it's not just about the money or the benefits or the salary or the title. I find that every time I work with a woman who successfully negotiates and a successful negotiation for me is, is you did it right. You tried, you negotiated that has impact on every other part of her life. It builds her confidence. It, it cements that she knows what she's worth. And that's why I do what I do. It's just the coolest feeling in the world to be able to help facilitate uh, that change in somebody's life. So Let's talk really quick about why you should negotiate. A lot of these might seem obvious, right? We're, we're getting more money. We want to negotiate in order to get paid what we, you know, what our fair market rate is, but you're not actually just getting more money today. And this is a good perspective to motivate you to continue to negotiate throughout your career. So it's not just, let's say $2,000 more or $10,000 more on five extra days of PTO today you're actually negotiating for your entire career and for your entire life. So this statistic is specific to women, but I imagine we see something similar with men. Women who consistently negotiate their salaries over their lifetime earn a million dollars more on average than those who do not. Like this is a screenshotable slide. Screenshot this, share this, at teachable, at her first 100K. You make a million dollars more money over your 30, 40 years of your career, if you negotiate compared to those who don't. So again, it's not just about the impact that the money has right now, it's the impact over your entire life. Pretty crazy. I read this stat two years ago and yeah, it motivated me even more in my business to do what I do. So if that's not enough to get you to negotiate, to motivate you, you investing this extra money as well, means that your money grows exponentially. So let's say you get $2,000 more in salary. If you invest half of that in a retirement account, you have all of the gains on top of that money as well. So your money can grow even more, right? It can compound even more if part of that extra money goes into an investing account. So this is something I'd like to highlight as well. This is one of the other parts of what I do is focusing on growing your money and, and investing. So if you take part of this money now, it could be even more money later. I also like to highlight that you're not just fighting for your own pay. You're not just fighting for your own worth. You're fighting for every person who comes after you. And I will tell you as someone who was told repeatedly, oh, we don't negotiate at this company or we don't, we don't have conversations about salary here. When I was able to have those conversations and they were successful because they were, every other person after me, especially women, felt more confident and felt able to have those conversations because I had trailblazed the way. And if you're a man especially, or if you're a white woman, you have a huge responsibility, not just for yourself, but if you're a man to make sure that other women or that women are being compensated fairly. And for me as a white woman, I have a responsibility to make sure that I'm negotiating not just for me, but for women of color who work at my organization or other marginalized groups. So to motivate you, you're not just fighting for your own pay. You're also advocating for and paving the way for every person who comes after you. So that's my pep talk for negotiating. So let's talk about the specifics. 
Here's a couple things we'll cover, and Aaron highlighted this in the beginning. We're going to learn how to approach salary conversations with confidence. We're going to learn how to feel confident and self-assured going into a negotiation rather than small and scared and timid and really nervous. We're going to touch on the number one thing you're doing wrong in a negotiation. The number one reason why negotiating either feels scary or why your negotiations in the past haven't worked. And we're going to talk about how to fix it. We're also going to answer one of the most dreaded job interview questions about salary that you get asked and you just freeze and you don't know what to say. We're going to tell you exactly how to answer it. And we're also going to frame your ask to make sure that a yes is as easy as possible. We also have time for a Q&A and then we'll get a special offer at the end, which I'm really excited to talk about. All right, team, if you're ready to get paid what you're worth, tell us in the chat. I'm ready for y'all to get paid what you're worth as I take a quick sip of my water. Aaron, we have people coming through. We have people in the chat just excited to hear what you right. have to say. And, and we have folks saying ready. ready. We yeah. are ready. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, let's do this. So ready to be. Exact. You can also share your key takeaway with me. That helps my business. That helps know that these concepts are helpful to you. You can tag me at her first hundred K. You can also tag teachable. Um, and thanks again for them uh, hosting, hosting me today and hosting this workshop. All right. So we hear a lot of conflicting advice about when you should start talking about numbers. If you're negotiating a salary at a new job, we also hear conflicting advice. If you're trying to ask for a raise. Should you give the number first? Should they give the number first? It does, you know, who has the power? At what point should you start talking numbers? And I'm a big believer that you should avoid giving a number first. Why? The biggest reason is that when I've given a number first, statistically speaking, I have often undercut myself. I think all of us do this, especially if you're a woman, you probably do this, is you're so nervous about asking for what you're worth or asking for potentially too much that you undercut yourself and undersell. So I vote that you don't give a number first. You wait for them, the ball is in their court. You have more of the power and more of the perspective if you allow them to talk about compensation first. And this doesn't mean we don't ask. So the biggest question I hear about the salary conversation in a job interview, and you've probably been asked this before, and Aaron and I were talking about this question before, what are your salary expectations? Or what is your salary range? This usually comes at the end of that first phone interview, you know, after like, tell us about yourself and like, what are your weaknesses? It's like, what are your salary expectations? How the hell are you supposed to answer that? Right? You have no idea. You don't want to undersell yourself. You also don't want to oversell yourself because you don't want to get laughed out of the room. Right? So it's either potentially undercut yourself and lose out on money or oversell and miss out on the job, right? And this is the most common question I get asked. Like, how do I answer this question? The what is your salary expectations question? Here's exactly what to say. Especially if you're on that first phone interview, you don't know the full scope of the role yet, right? You have no idea what the responsibilities are exactly, how to price yourself. You haven't done any research in terms of what this, uh, you know, what this job should pay. So for me, my previous life, I was a social media manager. And especially with any like marketing or creative roles, they were so different depending on what company you interviewed at. So one social media manager might manage, you know, this like paid ads, right? And another might manage this other different thing like blog posting. And so you have to price yourself differently. So in answer to what is your salary expectations, what you can say is, hey, you know, it's really hard to understand the full scope of the role at this stage in, this, in the job interview process, but I'd love to know your budget. Nine times out of 10, they'll give you your budget because they have a budget. <laughs> they already know what they're going to pay you. I think right. it's a great point, Tori. And, and as someone who, you know, been on the other side of hiring, I think getting this answer back just it shows a level of maturity too. Um because not every role is the same. <laughs> so for right. someone to say this back, you're like, ah, you know what? Very valid. That's a, I'm glad you want to know more before, you know, getting into a salary negotiation. Right. It's like our way of dodging the question, but it's actually a valid reason. You know, like it's like, I actually don't understand the full scope of the role, but I'm really excited to learn and I'd love to know your budget. Because again, they do have a budget. They're not creating this job out of nowhere without knowing exactly what they're gonna pay. The other question I hear a lot 
Um, and it's actually illegal, and I believe 17 states, I'm in Washington state, I know it's illegal here, is what is your current salary or what are you currently making? So if that question ever comes up, I need you to Google after this is over that question and then your state because it's most likely illegal in your state. And if it's not, you can, you know, move away from that question as well in saying, hey, actually, um, you know, I'm really excited to talk about this role. I'm not really interested in talking about, you know, my current salary, that's not relevant, but I'm really excited about this position. But don't answer a, don't answer a question about salary if it's illegal in your state. So look that up as well. So again, to touch on this, what are your salary expectations? What are you looking to get paid? What's your range? Hey, it's actually hard to understand the full scope of the role at this stage in the process, so I'd love to know your budget. All right. Aaron, did I see a question come through? I was actually testing something out, but yeah, it, it actually probably is a great time for that question. Because sure. uh, I was seeing if I could show the question yeah. to the crowd. Uh, and so I actually brought it up. Um, what about when an application oh. requires you to fill out a salary expectation? My favorite, Sheena, great question. You zero that out. Zero, zero, comma, zero, zero, zero. It's that easy. Because again, if they're just looking at your salary, right, your rate, and they're not looking at your, your, your skills, your experience, your education level, they're not a company you want to work for anyway. So this is what I do with all my negotiation clients is if you're filling it out online, you don't have an opportunity to say this, just zero it out. The other option is that you've hopefully already done your salary research and you're going to give a number slightly higher than what that research tells you. If you don't feel comfortable zeroing it out for whatever reason, know your scope of work, know what you should be getting paid, know your market rate, and then bump it up a little bit. And we'll talk about in a second why we bump it up a little bit. Hopefully that answers her question. All right. This is something, this is probably the most important part of what I'll talk about today. This mindset shift is the most important part about a negotiation. We are taught that negotiations are fights to the death right? We're taught that you're going to have to like unsheath your sword and put on your boxing gloves and fight to the death to get what you want. That's a conflict. That's not a negotiation. Negotiations are collaborations, not conflicts. Collaborations, not conflicts. It means that you and your boss or your potential boss are working together to find a solution to a problem. It's just like any other problem you're solving in your day-to-day -day work. Problem solving is probably one of your strengths. You are solving a problem collaboratively with your boss or your potential boss. And that problem is you not being compensated fairly. They're not conflicts. Every time I've approached a negotiation, especially when I was younger, I was thinking like, oh gosh, they're going to hate me. They're going to think I'm ungrateful. They're going to punish me for negotiating. It's going to be this horrible fight. I'm going to get yelled at. They're going to be angry at me. It's just going to be a bad time. And if that's you, comment in the chat as well, because I know it's pre pretty much every client I've worked with. Negotiations are collaborations, though. They're simply a bigger problem that you're solving. They're not fights. They're not um, antagonistic, right? You're simply asking for something and figuring out a solution together. You are not on opposing teams with the person you're negotiating with. You are on the same team. I give this example in a lot of my classes is if you're a parent, you negotiate all the time, right? You negotiate all of the time with your kids. And there's, you know, you don't dislike your children. Your children don't dislike you. You're on the same team. You're trying to figure out a solution, right? Or I like to give the example of maybe you had tacos for lunch and your partner comes home from work and they're like, hey, let's go get Mexican for dinner. And you're like, actually, uh, I had tacos for lunch. Can we go somewhere else? That's a negotiation. It's tiny, but that's a negotiation. You're problem solving. You're on the same team trying to find a solution to the problem of you not being compensated fairly. You're not fighting. You're not in this war or this battle. You are on the same team. And this is the mindset that not only will make you feel more confident in a negotiation, but you have to project this as well. 
because body language, the way you approach these negotiations is so important. So if you're walking into a negotiation feeling really scared or really fearful or also just really, really defensive, it's not going to go well. If you're open and you're figuring out, again, a solution to this problem and you're excited to do that, this negotiation will, more, will be more likely to go well for you. If you're approaching it with confidence, with excitement, and with a problem-solving kind of attitude. Again, negotiations are collaborations, not conflicts. So I want you to share in the chat. Have you thought of negotiations as conflicts? If so, tell me a little why. And I know I have. Up until this kind of reframe for me, it was very much like, okay, I got to battle it out. And I got to battle to know to get what, you know, to get paid what I'm worth. Uh, I definitely think it took me a little while to get there while we let folks sure. catch up for our YouTube delay. Um, you know, I think it, it took time to even get to that, to think of it less of a conflict and more of a collaboration. I, just because like, I think you, you kind of freeze. It's like a deer in the headlights moment when people ask. As soon as money gets in the conversation, it just becomes a whole different conversation from where you started uh, until you right. had that reframing. It so. very much is. I love that you said that. Uh, this is It is kind of a fight, flight, or freeze, right? It's very easy to get in these situations. And also something that has happened to me every time I've negotiated and every time I've counseled somebody through a negotiation, when you're in the moment, it often feels like the biggest deal in your entire life, right? You're like, this is such a big conversation. This is such a big, uh, you know, time in my life. And you get so nervous and it is right. It is, yeah. you know, it, you're advocating for what you're worth. It's potentially a really scary thing, especially if you're doing it for one of the first times. And what I'll say is that, um, I, I just have to kind of zoom out and remind myself in a year, five years, whatever, this is going to be so small and I'm going to feel so much better because I did it. And because I, you know, I gained these skills because now I have these skills for the rest of my life. So if it for does sure. feel like this conflict or this really big thing, try zooming out a little bit too and thinking to yourself like, okay, we're just having a conversation. It just happens to be maybe about this, this thing I care about a lot. For sure. And I, I know you can't see the comments and there's there's so many coming in at this moment. Yay! Yeah, I, I would say the overwhelming response is yes. Like and because some of the things that I've seen people type in is the intimidation factor. Right. Um, you know, folks expressing that they feel ungrateful for asking more. Or they're not mm -hmm. sure how to reframe that. Um, or, you know, perhaps managers making folks feel like they ask too much, uh, yeah. you know, it, perhaps devaluing experience um, in just a the anxiety that comes with asking something that you're uncertain, perhaps what the answer is. Yeah. And I, we can talk about this more in the Q&A. When I say we approach negotiations as collaborations, let's hope that the other person does too. Sometimes they don't, you know, and that's the really important thing is to keep coming to the table with this positive attitude, with this like eagerness to find a solution. Um, because, you know, then you're not the jerk, right? If this other person is is not responding to that, that's completely on them. And I've been lucky that uh, pretty much every, I would say, except one, pretty much every boss I've had has been really eager to work on this with me. Um, and so it's just, it's important to realize that yes, negotiation is a lot of what you say and how you project yourself, but it is this other person too. So that's why it is important to continue projecting this this feeling and this this hopefulness of like, we can figure this out together. This is a collaboration. Um, so food for thought. All right. Companies expect you to negotiate. <laughs> this is something I think so many people forget about is that they expect you to have a conversation about compensation. They expect it. They are pricing the job. They're giving you a certain amount in a raise with the expectation that you will have a conversation about negotiation or conversation, excuse me, about salary and that you will negotiate. When you don't, when you take the offer as is, you are leaving money on the table. Companies expect you to have a conversation about compensation. So they are varying how much they're offering you knowing or hoping that you will have a conversation with them. So they are undercutting you on purpose. They expect you 
to come to them and ask for more. So they're purposefully offering you less than you're worth, right? I think we do this all of the time in everyday life, right? We're like, I know when I like list or go, am going to like buy things on offer up or something, I'll offer a little less than what I'm willing to pay because I, I assume that that other person's going to come back and say like, okay, I, you know, I can't do that, but I can do this. And then I'm okay. Right. If it's like, I don't know, a chair I want and it's $50, maybe I'll offer 40 and then they go, okay, I'm willing to pay or I'm willing to give it to you for 45. And then you're like, great, done. Right. Maybe I wanted to pay 45 the whole time. So they're offering you less because they expect you to negotiate. If they offer you the best offer right at the gate and you negotiate, suddenly they're in a bad spot, right? They're either over budget or they you've maybe priced out of that role. So they're expecting you to have a conversation about your worth and about your salary. So they're purposely off, purposefully offering you less than what they're willing to give you because they're expecting you to talk about it. So now that you know that companies expect you to negotiate, does that make the process a little less intimidating? Because I know it did for me. It's not just, again, about the money you're getting, right? It's also, oh, well, the mindset of a company or my boss knows that I'm gonna have a conversation with them about compensation. They expect it. It's not coming out of the blue. It's gonna be a conversation that we can have together because the companies expect you to have it. And Aaron, I would love your thoughts about this as well. I think you're responding to people in the chat, but. I'm, I'm doing everything at once, but I do have feelings on this one. You know, I think this was one of the big mindset mindset shifts for me is realizing, like having been on the other side of hiring right. and having been, you know, having, having to get a role too. Um, I mean, knowing that companies expect to negotiate, it just makes that conversation not necessarily, it's not about making more natural, but it just right. makes it, if it's expected that the, the downside of asking and the downside of, of trying to negotiate for your worth, there isn't one. Cause the, the worst that's going to happen is perhaps you don't get exactly what you want, but at least by advocating and, and starting to establish like, this is what I'm looking for in a role. There's a lot to be gained um, with very, very, very little downside. Right. And I think that we talked about, you know, as one of the things you're going to learn is like the reason why your negotiations might not have worked in the past or why you haven't negotiated. The collaborations, not conflicts thing is really key. I find that, that that mindset switch is so, so crucial for giving people the confidence to negotiate and the resources to negotiate. And that shift can make your negotiation more likely. And if you've never negotiated before and you're intimidated by it, knowing again that they're going to expect a conversation about compensation rather than you know it feeling like you're just asking something out of the blue can can offer you a little comfort it's like okay we know this is happening this is this is the next step and it makes it less intimidating and if you don't mind a few uh, there's a couple questions that are somewhat recurring that i think are just yeah. natural right now um you know s someone asked about like what level of range of negotiation like per I'd say perhaps try to speak it in terms of like percentage wise mm -hmm. for a role. Like I, every role is very different. The, a 5k raise on a, on a role that's 50k is very different than a 5k raise on a, on a role that's a hundred, you know, hundred plus. But, you know, from my experience for, for the folks who've asked that, you know, there's, there's sometimes, you know, 10, there could be 10 to 15% of wiggle room, especially if it's a role that's been open a while and uh, someone's having a hard time filling it. I mean, co companies are prepared to to move up and, and move down to, to get qualified candidates. It's hard to find yeah. talent. That, making it that far in the funnel, that's why you deserve to negotiate. You did something incredible. And what I'll say too is actually um, viewing it from a particular dollar amount is actually the wrong way to go about it. Um, to your point of five five k for a fifty thousand dollars salary is is a good chunk of money. That's ten percent. You know, for one hundred fifty thousand, it's it's less money, right? Um, so it's actually not about a specific dollar amount or percentage. It's actually based on research, and we we'll talk about this a little bit later about um, uh, the resources to do that market salary research. Um, but that is the way you negotiate. You don't think, oh gosh, I would like to move into an apartment that's $500 more expensive. So I would like $500 more salary every month. We don't do that. And we also don't do, oh, well, I want 
$5,000 more or $10,000 more, we actually base it on what your market rate is. Because I know for me, there were so many times where I was like, oh, well, like $2,000 more would be nice. And then I would do market research and realize, oh, I'm actually getting underpaid by like $10,000. So if you're focusing on, oh, I just need this amount of money more in order to pay my expenses, right? Or I need this amount of money because it just feels right. Or I want, you know, 20% because that, that is what I think I deserve. All of that can get really fuzzy really quick. And it also potentially, again, undercuts you. Um, I had, I had um, a negotiation client who, you know, approached me with that. She was like, I think you know, I just, I really want a 10% raise. And I was like, well, what market research have you done? And and she was like, well, you know, and then came back to me after a couple of days and looked and she was like, well, actually I'm getting underpaid by like $40,000. And I was like, well, then we ask for that and we present that as data. And guess what? She got $40,000 extra. So that's part of it, right? Is it's not just a number that you want or a percentage that feels good. It's, it's more about your market rate and what you should be getting paid based on data rather than kind of like pulling a number from the air and being like, ah, sure, that sounds good. Because again, that makes sure that makes sure that you're compensated fairly, but it also gives you more confidence. You can actually prove why you're deserving of that number as opposed to like a number that you just grabbed out of the sky and like called good. So, so to, to repeat, because I know folks have asked, because uh, a lot of what you've said so far, obviously definitely applies to new job hires, but folks ask about, you know, annual performance reviews, asking for raises. I think if I can restate what I think I'm, I'm hearing here is understanding what your compensation is relative to the market is helpful at any stage, whether you're in the job or, or advocating for a raise or you know, coming up for performance review. These same steps can help you along the way. Is that accurate? Yeah. And um, I, I'm launching a course and we'll talk about that a little bit later, all about negotiating and navigating that negotiation. And we actually go through exactly how to do that research in order to make sure that your data is good and viable, but to also give you the confidence to know exactly what you should be asking for. Um, and uh, without giving away too much, the basics of that is the glass doors, the pay scales, the salary.com doing a quick search around your job title, your area, um, your, you know, your skills and experience maybe. So that's a really great starting point for doing that research is just seeing what the data is telling you. We go deeper than that in the course. I tell you a little uh, better strategies to get more accurate data for you, but a quick, like quick Google search, a quick look at, at those aggregate pay sites can be a great start to doing that research. Another one to add for, for especially the tech sector is comparably. I've seen, uh, but it's the same thing. Just quick, quick glance. It's not the be all end all top level look. Yeah, it can give you a better idea though. I know, yeah, for a lot of, a lot of the clients I've worked with, it was a great, great starting point to figure out like, oh gosh, I am getting underpaid by $7,000 and, and figuring out, you know, the ways to move forward and the way to get even more accurate data so that, again, you feel confident negotiating and you can prove you're worth that amount of money based on what the data is telling you. Cool. Great questions, everybody. Keep them coming. And we'll do a more formal Q&A at the end. All right. Ask for more than your market rate, y'all. And this is probably super scary. <laughs> so maybe you do know your market rate. Maybe you have done that research. And this was actually a perfect segue. And you're already feeling nervous. You're already maybe feeling nervous about negotiating. I actually need you to ask for even more. I need you to ask for more, especially if you're a woman, especially if you're a person of color. I actually need you to ask for more than your market rate. And I'll tell you why. Remember that like dumb offer up example I just gave about the chair? If you're offering a chair for $50 and you actually want $50, but you know people are going to negotiate with you, you're not going to get $50, right? You're going to get $40, right? I've come in and swooped in and bought your chair for $45 or $40. So actually, we're going to ask for more than we want to get paid. So let's see this in, in action here. Let's say you're making $50,000. Your research tells you you should be making $55,000. And maybe this is for a new job. Maybe this is for a raise. We're actually going to ask for 60. If negotiations are collaborations, one, and two, you know that companies expect you to negotiate they're undercutting you, right? They're lowballing you. You've either gotten an offer for $50,000 or you're currently making $50,000. That's an undercut. If we overcut, 
we'll meet in the middle, right where we want to be. If your research says you should be making $55,000 and we ask for $55,000, guess where we end up? We end up at like $52,000 or $53,000, which is better than we started, but not your market rate number. So again, let's break this down. You've offered, been offered, or you're currently making $50,000. Your market research tells you $55,000 is where you should be aiming. If negotiations are collaborations, not conflicts, and you know they're offering you less money, we're gonna overshoot with the expectation we'll meet in the middle at 55, exactly where we wanna be. Now I'm sure the question is gonna be, how much more do I ask for? How much more? Give a range, so 60 maybe to $62,000. Five to $7,000 seems to be a good range to ask for. So, don't ask for a million dollars, right? We're not asking for $100,000 in this case. That's too much money. We're gonna ask for slightly more than we want in order to get it. Because again, if we ask for exactly what we want, we're gonna get less than what we want because we're gonna meet in the middle. Just like they're not, ask, they're not offering you what they can pay because they're gonna end up having to pay you more. So we wanna end up in the middle we want to end up at the number that is your market rate. So we need to ask for more in order to get it. Does that make sense for everybody? Ask for slightly more than what you're looking to make. Again, goal is to meet in the middle. If negotiations are collaborations, if we're doing this collaboratively, we're compromising, a compromise by definition, we're meeting in the middle. We're figuring out something that works for both of us. Let's make the middle the number we're trying to get. Don't self-sabotage. Don't ask for the number you're looking for and then get less. Whoop, duplicate slide. Sorry about that, y'all. All right, to recap, recap everything we just chatted about. We're not gonna give a number first. We're gonna ask them what their budget is and most likely they're gonna tell us. We're gonna mindset shift to focus on negotiations as problem solving, as collaborations, of being on the same team as the person you're negotiating with rather than a conflict, rather than feeling intimidated or scared or angry or passionate. I would say passionate in a bad way. Passion, good passion. Companies expect you to negotiate. They expect you to have a conversation about compensation. And you need to ask for more than your market rate in order to get it. For meeting in the middle, if it is truly a compromise, we want the middle to be your market rate. Cool. If you're like, okay, all of that was great. That was, that was great. But what now? I still don't know exactly what to say. And I'm really scared. I don't know what to say in a salary negotiation or in, in a conversation about a raise. I don't know how to do that market research or I don't know how to do it properly. What if they say no? What if they just outrightly tell me no? How do I respond to that? How do I make sure that I continue to feel confident in this negotiation even when my boss sends me a weird email at 10.45 p.m.? How do I respond to that? You're in luck. This is why I'm here today. Navigating the Negotiation is my brand new course. This content has actually been tested over the past two years. I've had thousands of people take this course. And for today only, it expires at midnight. It is 20% off this price. The retail price is actually a couple thousand. I've made sure to price it in an accessible way because I want to make sure you all can get this information because it is life-changing. And even better, it is 20% off until the end of today. This is one of my favorite. I'm going to give you a couple testimonials just to prove it works. With your help, I got a previous job offer up from 95 to 115. So what is that? Quick math. 20K more? Well, I just got a second job offer. And I leveraged the two and I landed at 130,000 plus a $25,000 signing bonus. That's 30, 35K a year plus a 25K bonus. You just got me a down payment on a new house. Wow. Let me tell you, I got that email made my entire life. So, so cool. So if you're wondering, is this course for me? I don't know if this makes sense for me. I'm not sure if I'm ready to invest. Here's a couple things. You know you're being underpaid. 
but you don't really know what to do about it, this is for you. If you're applying for new jobs and you want to make sure you get the highest salary possible, you want to make sure that you're getting paid what you're worth, this is for you. Maybe we have a couple of people in the chat, your annual review is approaching. You want a raise, you know you deserve a raise, but you don't know how to go about asking for one. If negotiating makes you break out in hives, uh, if these interview questions make you nervous, make you want to curl up in a ball and die, and if you already and if you already know you're ready to start advocating for what you're worth, this is 100% for you. These are three different conversations with people. And yes, that is a Timothy Chalamet gif. If you know me or follow me, you know that he is my ride or die. So yes, that is a Timothy Chalamet gif in the center. So we have somebody on my left, maybe it's your right, I don't know if it's mirrored. Someone who got $6,000 more using the content in this course. Someone who negotiated $20,000 more. And then another person who negotiated $12,500 more. Which is just, again, these are the coolest messages to get all using the content in this course. One of my favorites, she's actually a long-term client of mine. She signed with 30% more annually. And she asked, actually just messaged me a couple days ago to say that she's leveraging this salary, this job offer that she got actually into another one. So she's been at this role that she negotiated $30,000 more for, or 30% more for. And then she actually it actually sets her up for even more money in this next job because of the money she's making now by negotiating. Tori's course is, it puts Tori's course at one of the best returns, greatest returns on an investment I've ever gotten. And a couple of the things you'll walk away with. You're gonna walk away with my secret, magical word for word script on exactly what to say, whether you're asking for a raise or negotiating a new salary. If this, has been a, if this has been an issue for you, if you know you wanna negotiate, but you don't know what to say, I'm gonna give you literally the exact script of what to say. We're gonna talk about why your negotiation techniques haven't worked in the past and what to do differently. I'm gonna give you the six essential tips that every successful negotiator knows. My favorite method for countering an offer, if you get an offer, but you're like, ah, this isn't super exciting, or this isn't my market rate, we're gonna talk about how to counter. Secret formula for getting exactly what you want, exactly what you're asking for. We're also going to talk about how to negotiate your benefits besides salary to increase your total compensation package. What to do if your boss says no, if they flat out won't budge. We're going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about exactly what you're worth and how to discover that. And the mindset and the confidence you need to go into a negotiation and walk out successful. I like, I like testimonials because when I, whenever I'm going to buy something or thinking about buying something, I want to make sure it works. So there's so many testimonials here, but this is my last one. This is from uh, one of the course partici participants, Bethany. I love, she says, um, gave me the gumption to overy up and ask for a raise when I knew I was being underpaid. She helped me confront the mon monster on my shoulder that is imposter syndrome. Guess what? I was immediately granted my raise. Since then, I've asked for what I'm worth at every new freelance gig. And if they can't do it, it simply means that they just can't afford me yet. Pretty cool. All right. I'll get off my, my navigating negotiation soapbox. But again, it is 20% off only today until midnight. And I would just love to see you there and love to be able to give you the tools and the confidence you need to successfully negotiate. Um, and actually, the subtitle for this course so the course is called Navigating Negotiation, how to negotiate your salary and get paid what you're worth in a bullshit patriarchal society. <laughs> and that's that's what it's about. Tori, thank you so much. Uh, and first off, thank you for bringing your course to Discover and to Teachable in general and for walking through this today. Um, we have a lot of questions. Ooh. We're gonna do our best to get through as, many, right. as many as we could. Um, for, for those watching on YouTube, I uh, ju I posted the link a few minutes ago to, to where to go get Tori's course. For those watching on Teachable, um, there should be a button above our head, perhaps. Uh, and if you click that button, that'll take you directly to Tori's course. Whether you're watching on YouTube or on Teachable, uh, we're also going to send out a link after the fact. So don't worry if you can't find it. I promise we'll get it to you. Um, Tori, if you're ready, right. I would say take your sip of water, recharge, yeah, do and it. do you want to hop into these questions? Cool. Uh, so let me 
Let me start first with some of the course related ones is for, for this new course in particular, does it cover things such as how to negotiate things outside of compensation, things like rent, other bills, or in, in addition to those things like not comp, not just salary related compensation in a yeah. role. Does it touch upon either of those? It talks topics? all about, um, like we say here, how to negotiate benefits besides salary. So the other benefits that are part of a compensation package and exactly what you can negotiate for. I think a lot of people don't like know the full list of things you can negotiate for besides your salary. So we touch on that and exactly how to negotiate for them. We don't touch on things like your rent or your credit card interest rate. I actually have a free script for negotiating those that's on my website. Um, but no, the course is covering salary or raise negotiations rather than negotiating everything in your life. Although I'm sure these principles can be applied. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to negotiate your rent, asking for you know 20% more, it will probably actually not go very well for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that, Tori. Um, sure. Again, just moving through these, I, we, we do have you know at least 10 minutes to go through some of these, but whatever we don't get to today, you know, one of the benefits of, of joining one of Tori's courses is uh, you actually have access to asking Tori questions. That's accurate, right? I know that's one of the common questions is, is, hey, you know, if I take this course, can I ask you questions as I go to, to do my salary negotiation? Can you speak actually to that while I go grab other questions? Yeah, um, the course is completely self-paced and it never expires. So you get this course for the entire life, I guess until I die, you get this course forever, uh, which means that you can buy this information now and have it for every single job you, you negotiate for or every single raise you negotiate for, for your entire life. And you get to ask me questions. So part of the additional um, benefit and the bonus of this course, we have a couple different ones, including all of those scripts. Um, but one of my favorite bonuses, like Aaron said, is that we have a whole Q&A section. So you can come in, um, ask a specific question about your own situation in the comments, and I'll be there to answer it. Very cool. Let's hold it down a little bit. There we go. Um, and so another question, Kelsey asks, what are your thoughts on the tradition of salary being a hush-hush topic? Should coworkers discuss pay? Oh, we need like a, we need a couple I know, of I know. Um, I, if you know anything about me and, and you know my work, I am a big believer in transparent conversations about money, always. Um, I am very transparent, even with my own community, about every salary I've had in the past, what I make now as a business owner, that is an entirely personal decision though. Like that's something that I have decided and also because of the work I do. If I'm gonna talk the talk, I need to walk the walk, right? If I'm gonna tell you that money conversations should be transparent and should be untaboo, I need to lead by example. Um, I have seen companies punish people for having conversations about compensation. So that is something to be aware of. And I would say that if you are working at a company that is like that, that is a great red flag to log in the back of your mind that this company might not be the one uh, to yeah stick around with for a long time. Um, I, I talk about this more in the course, but if a company is not willing to have a conversation with you about compensation, or if they're shutting down conversations about money or transparency, that says a lot about them, right? And they're not really a company you want to work for. If they're not willing to have a conversation with you about your market rate or about your salary, that says a lot about their business practices. So I am a big believer. I want to make the blanket statement. Yes, let's talk about salary all the time. I also don't want to get a message from you that says I was punished or I was let go because my jerk company fired me for doing so. Um, so just keep that in mind. I would say that if um, you do want to have conversations about salary, one of the best ways to do that is actually by asking or offering within a range. So I've done this with like male coworkers who, you know, because I want to know if Chad's making more money than me. And if Chad won't tell me exactly what he's making, I'll say, hey, are you making over or under $80,000 a year? And he'll say over. And I go, okay, are you making over or under $100,000 a year. And he goes under. Well, that helps a lot, actually. I know now that he's making somewhere between $80,000 and $100,000. It's not the exact number, but it's still helpful. And you can be more specific, right? You can say over or under $90,000. So that over or under rule is a great way to have a conversation about compensation with your coworkers in a way that feels slightly less intrusive, but also gives you some good information. 
Thank you so much, Tori. That, that is a hard question. Um, uh, another question that is difficult, but I think is, is was asked quite well, a quite, by a bunch of different people quite a few times is, you know, how does this differ during a pandemic? If it does, um, folks want to negotiate salary. You know, the, I grabbed Lindsay's question, but this, this was probably asked 20 times across yeah, various I'm chats. not surprised. Um, this is a question I've gotten like every other day for the past like eight months. Can I negotiate during COVID? Am I ungrateful if I negotiate during COVID? And what I'll say is that um, uh, you you negotiate for what you're worth always. E you know, even if things aren't going well or if you know a global pandemic's happening, you still deserve to get paid what you're worth. And arguably, if COVID's happening and you're taking on a, an added responsibility, I know a lot of teams have been cut, or I know a lot of people are expected to do more with less you actually have an even stronger case for negotiating for a raise, right? Because you're actually taking on even more than your day-to-day -day duties. We talk about this in the course as well. We talk about how to approach these conversations without um, you know, worrying that you're going to be viewed as ungrateful or worrying that you know they're gonna laugh you out of the room. So we actually do talk about this in the course of how to approach these conversations delicately. But I will say, again, as kind of a blanket statement, I don't know your particular situation, but um, you deserve to get paid what you're worth, global pandemic or not. And especially if you are taking on even more responsibilities or the company's leaning on you even more, you deserve to be compensated because that's actually, not only um, a, a confirmation that you're doing good work, right? That's what your salary is, is a confirmation that you're doing good work. It also incentivizes you to do even more, right? A, an, an increase in salary or an increase in benefits is a company's way of, of confirming with you, hey, we believe in you and we're continuing to invest in you because we value the work that you're doing. And so that's something to keep in mind is that you know, this is a two way street, you're probably giving so much of your life and so much of your energy and so much of your day to day headspace to a job and to a position. And you deserve to be compensated for that. And your company is uh, should be the ones who are showing up and saying like, yes, we see you and we want to make sure that we are valuing you and that you know, you're valued. Um, and of course, salary and compensation is a great way to do that. Couldn't agree more. Uh, every company's greatest resource is its people. And um, so ultimately COVID or no COVID, like every company ne needs us employees to, to keep it yeah. going. You're, you're working. And we talk about in the course, like the ways, again, to have these conversations in a sensitive, collaborative way. That's not just like F you pay me, right? It's not about that. It's like, how do we make sure, again, that this is a collaboration? We talked about this in the workshop. We'll talk about this in the course to make sure that both parties are happy at the end of the day, rather than you feeling like you have to walk in and like be insensitive when you know everybody's struggling with COVID. So there's ways to go about these conversations that are more delicate and that are you know respectful. And I talk about that in the course. And this is why one of the reasons why I believe in this course so much is I want you to have these conversations in a way that will you know, lead to success rather than potentially like blowing things up, right? I want you to make sure that you're successful and also that, you know, you're being respectful during a really difficult time. Thank you, Tori. Um, another question I saw in a couple different chats, so sorry if I'm not attributing one person, is how does this apply or do your tips apply to the nonprofit world as well as the for-profit? <laughs> um, and could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, we have a whole um, FAQ section on the course page. So feel free to check that out. We also have testimonials. Uh, my favorite is from a woman named Mackenzie. She's in Texas. She's a teacher. Um, uh, I know it's a little different than nonprofit, but it tends to kind of lump together. It's like, okay, I'm in education or I work at a nonprofit or I work at a government job. Can I negotiate? And um, she was, she came to me and she was afraid. She was like, I've been told I can't negotiate. I'm a teacher. We don't really do that. And I'm like, Nope, you can. We got her 17% more annually. Um, so I will say that it is a harder industry uh, or those industries are more difficult to negotiate. And that's why I touch on things you can negotiate besides salary. And that's a really, really great tool to have if you work at a nonprofit or if you work at, you know, in education or at a government job. Um, being able to negotiate for things besides compensation can be really helpful if that compensation is like locked and loaded, 
What I will say too, is that pretty much every job is negotiable. It's never a bad thing to ask. And even if you don't succeed, I, again, for me, success in a negotiation is you did it, you tried, you you put yourself out there, that's success. But even if you don't get what you're asking for, um, you know, maybe you can get a little bit more, right? Or maybe there's other benefits that you can negotiate for. So there's never a harm in trying. Um, the worst that they can say is no, truly. Like the worst they can say is like, no, we can't really do that. And then you get to decide, okay, you know, do I want to take this job or do I want to keep trying to negotiate? And we also talk about that in the course of when to know what to do. Um, but long story short, Yes, you can negotiate in a nonprofit. You can negotiate at a government or governmental job or in you know education. It's also probably beneficial to learn how to negotiate for things besides your salary because you might have more leeway there. Thank you, and, and that that was a very common theme in the questions as well. Mm -hmm. um, one thing before our time is up, yeah. I know there's a replay available, and I, just for those folks who who don't want to dig all the way through, is. Uh, market rate, right? Like so many folks heard that part and kind of had questions about repeating what resources you would look at. And one thing I'd ask you to actually speak to as well is the market rate in New York City or San Francisco is definitely very different than the market rate in, you know, Austin, Texas or, or some other city. Yeah. So like, what are like, you know, not, not exhaustive list, quick and dirty, some of the first spots you would start if you're looking for market rate in uh, yeah, a specific city. Thank you for asking this, Aaron, because you're exactly right. A social media manager job in Seattle is going to pay a lot different than a social media manager job in Indianapolis, right? Or in Detroit or insert city here. So yeah, it is so important that when you're doing your market rate, and again, we talk about in the course exactly how to do this and exactly how to make sure you're getting your data and good data. Um, but one of my favorite places, and they're actually a Seattle company, so I like repping them, is Payscale. P-A-Y-S-C-A-L-E, payscale.com. They'll actually for free give you a salary report based on these more kind of three-dimensional questions. I find that with Glassdoor, salary.com, these tools, again, are a great like surface level tool but they're only asking you like two questions. They're typically asking you like, what's your job title and what city are you in? Which doesn't take into account your education level, your skills, the exact job description, right? And pay scale goes a little bit deeper than that. They're asking you how many years of experience do you have in this industry? What are your like top three skills? Exactly where are you located? Um, you know, what is your education level? I think I said that already, but it is uh, about, it'll take you probably five or 10 minutes and it gives you a more detailed look at what your market rate is, AKA, and we haven't really defined market rate. Market rate is what other people in that industry are being compensated at. So again, if I'm a social media manager, I'm looking at what are the other social media managers making nationwide? And specifically, what are the other social media managers in Seattle making? And then we go even deeper, right? What are they making in Seattle with three years of experience or with a master's degree? So it's really important to, to continue to funnel that data to get as specific to your situation as possible. Payscale is a great kind of deeper dive. And then we also go into specific strategies in the course to make sure that you know definitively what you should be getting paid, what you should be asking for, and even better strategies to narrow that information and to make it less general. But payscale.com, great place to start. Thank you so much, Tori. Um, folks, I do realize we're at time, I, and I apologize. I know there's so many questions we didn't get to today. Aaron, and we, have, we appreciate have it. a couple more minutes. I can answer a couple more questions. You do? Okay, incredible. Um, actually, follow up. I, I see four o'clock. That's why. If you have a minute or two, let's take it. Um, one quick question was for international, right? Um, hmm. that, not just for pay scale, but like your course. If you're, if, if you're negotiating at an international level, would you recommend your course? Is that like yeah. You know, are there applicable pieces beyond U.S. Co corporations and international corporations? Yeah. I mean, the strategies we use for negotiation don't change where, you know, they don't really change uh, depending on where you live. Um, with regards to, of course, res researching the market rate, they most definitely do. We talk about that. But your general strategies for like feeling confident in a negotiation, knowing what to say, knowing how to respond if they say no, advocating for what you're worth. That is that is genderless. That is locationless. That is resources for anybody and everybody. So I would say, yeah, if you're in another country besides the United States, definitely still useful for you. Awesome. You got time for one more? I, I got a good one here. I'd okay. like. 
So this is an incredible question. Um, oh, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So to read this out for folks on the Teachable Chat, do you recommend we wait till our end of the year review or proactively ask to meet with our boss beforehand? Basically, would you would you wait to talk about your raise, or is this something that you should be thinking about all the time? So I know I've said this a million times, but we actually cover this in the course. But what I'll tell you, and and this is why this is why I'm so proud of this course because I think I've taken almost every question and hopefully answered it somewhere. Um, but what I will say here. Your end of your end of your review or your annual review is a really good time to have a conversation about compensation. It's expected. You're having a conversation about your performance. It's a great time to make a case. And we talk about again in the course exactly how to go about doing that, exactly how to present your performance, your past year or past six months in a way that is like, oh yeah, let's give this person a raise. They're amazing. So Annual reviews, great time to do that. However, if you realize that you're being underpaid now, well, I wouldn't say in December, but you know, because annual reviews come in or year end reviews coming, but let's say, you know, it was a couple months before, let's say in July, you find out that you're not being compensated fairly, right? You find out either somebody else is making more money for less work, or you do some market research and you're like, oh God, I'm being really underpaid. Please have that conversation now. Please have that conversation now because you're potentially losing out on three, six, nine months of salary. And of course, if you invest that money, you're losing out on returns that are even greater than that. So when you know you're being underpaid, I need you to have that conversation as soon as possible. And the one tip I'll give in terms of practicality of how to approach that conversation, please do not walk up to your boss like I worked at a startup, we were in like a, my last job, it was a very like open office concept. I could walk over, up to my boss whenever I wanted and ask him a question. This is not, this is not the type of conversation to have where you just walk up and be like, hey, can I have 10 minutes? Don't do that. Don't just walk up and be like, hey, you wanna play, play a round of ping pong and then also go talk about how I'm being underpaid. Not a good idea. This is a conversation that should be prompted and should be scheduled. So again, Cover this in the course, quick email. What you can do is you can send an email that just says, hey, boss name, um, hope you had a great weekend. Um, I am so excited for my next year here or my next period of time or whatever that looks like, right? I'm so excited to continue work and continue work on these specific projects. Um, I would really love to set up a time this week to talk about uh, you know, my progress as well as my compensation. Um, when would be a good time to do that? So basically what you're doing, right, is you're just setting up, hey, I, I'm so excited about the work I'm doing. I'm so excited to get your feedback. And I, I want to hear from you. I want to check in on our progress. Talk about that as well as talk about my compensation. When would be a good time to do that? That way you're not ambushing your boss, right? You're both able to come to this conversation equipped, which actually might scare you, but it's better to have a boss who knows. Trust me, it's better to have a boss who knows you're going to have a conversation about compensation. And two, right, it is a more formal um, environment where you can actually take the lead, right? You're taking the lead on having this conversation. You're saying, hey, I, I want to talk to you about this because I'm really excited and I want to make sure I'm doing good work and I want to make sure I'm being compensated for it. You're taking the lead on that conversation. So to answer your question, year end or annual reviews, really great time to have that conversation, arguably the best. I would say, unless you know already you're being underpaid, but don't lose out on that amount of salary or that amount of money because you're like, oh God, my annual review isn't for nine more months, right? That's nine months that you could be potentially getting more money and getting your market rate. So um, have a conversation now if you realize that you're getting underpaid. Thank you, Tori. And as a follow-up to that, just because I want you to repeat it again, is this question oh, came up, uh -huh. I think, because they're on the slide delay. Is, is the same thing applies, right? You, you don't wait a year to have this conversation. The same type of logic applies because the money you don't the money you don't clamor for now, that's that's missed yep. investments. And that's just time you don't need to sit there and wait, especially if you're under. Yeah, and I will say, Katie, exactly how to respond to this. You can't be like, ah, I, I probably can't curse on here, but ah, I effed up and I don't you know, like I didn't ask for more money. Right. So what you can just say is like, hey, you know, thanks so much for all your feedback in the annual review. You know, had a great time talking with you and setting goals for this next year in doing some research around, you know, how I can show up better in my role. I actually realized that I'm being um, underpaid compared to my market rate. And we'd love to have a follow up conversation with you. When would be a good time to do that? Right. We're constantly framing it in terms of like, I'm excited. I'm doing research about this. I'm bettering myself. I'm bettering this, you know, my skills and my experience. 
And I, I actually realized that I'm getting underpaid compared to my market rate. So when would be a good time to discuss this? Great way to, to, to have that conversation without being like, ah, I didn't ask and now I don't know what to do. So it's a great way to follow up in a way that's still proactive. Tori, uh, we are at time. I want to thank you again for, for everyone who's still watching. And I, and I see there's quite a few people still watching. To repeat, Tori, you are awesome. Thank you for being on today. Thank you for bringing your new uh, that discount for your new course, uh, Navigating the Negotiation uh, to Discover, and for making that special discount available today. Um, I'll post for those on YouTube and for teaching with the link again. And we will also email that out to everyone who registered again shortly so you have access to it. That discount Tori mentioned is available to end it today. For everyone who's still watching, please let Tori know in the chat, uh, whether you're on YouTube or Teachable, how much you appreciate today's workshop because I appreciate it. I learned some things. Thank you again, Tori. With that, everyone, we'll be signing off in just a second. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.